You have not seen the president and there's no vice. All you hear every day is looting. 4.4 trillion, 8.9 uh, uh, trillion. Every blessed day. Who is looting? Fulani. Who is persecuting? Fulani. Or oh, they are lackeys from the south. I posted one other boy who is a Buharist on my page. Go and hear them. Everybody is now waking up. The man in there is no longer is not Buhari, not the man we voted for. But when I told you in 2017, they came to kill me. You were hailing Buratai for coming to Isiama Faruku to assassinate me with a with a battalion of soldiers. Do you see how a black man reasons? The problem I keep saying all over the world is that I don't believe in racism. I've said it before. I don't believe in racism because black people are getting the treatment all over the world that we deserve. We don't reason like normal human beings. No, we don't. Individually, we may, but as a group, as a collective, no, we don't. The, I said, I told you that in tw I don't lie. Why should I? I told you in 2017. July, if I'm not mistaken, that thing there is not Buhari. They said you can kill them, they can go and kill him. They came to my house, they killed my people, they killed my dog. As a result of the trauma, my father and my mother died as a result of it. Because I told you the truth. Because of that, I had to lose 28 of my men. I lost my cousin Adako. My dog was killed. And later, later, after about um, two years or thereabout, my mother and my father died as a result of the trauma because they were there. And they came into their bedroom. If you go to my, anybody who's been to my house, go to my parents' bedroom, you will see it. Bullet holes everywhere. My father and my mother were there as they were shooting. Full of people. They came to kill because I told you the truth. Today, what is happening? Let's hear what is happening. That truth I told that they wanted to kill me because of it. Let us hear what the people are now making of it. Please, do bear with me. Listen. Well, the fight of this government against corruption has been based primarily on rhetorics. The real thing on the floor, just as I'm telling you, we're talking about small NDDC. What about the new hush mummy at whom Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs spending 850 billion? 850 billion, she says, feeding children who were supposed to be at home during lockdown. Somebody spent 850 billion on what is called school feeding program. This is where I fought the brain of India. I don't know why Britain chose the perfect place to build a zoo in Africa. The largest zoo in the whole world is in Nigeria. I'm telling you the truth. So, do you know? Do you know what I find astonishing? People in the zoo they claim they went to school. Some of them are under anointing. They claim they are pastors, they are reverend, they are ministers, and all that rubbish. Some claim they're intellectuals, they are the elite, that they are well read. Others aren't quite schooled enough. They are all there. A full and woman rose up and said, I have spent 850 billion naira on school feeding program. But at the same time, listen, at the same time there is COVID-19, and as you well know, the first places to be that to be shut down are the schools, isn't it? The schools are not in operation, people are no longer going to work. So where did you see the children? You spent 850 billion on. Nobody can answer. And she's still holding her portfolio till tomorrow morning. She was the girlfriend of um, Abakiari before Abakiari died. Are you following? This is a country you want me to believe there are sensible human, there are human beings walking with two legs, not chimpanzees. And after, do you, do you think that white people don't read all these things? Whites, they read them. They read, and when they read it, they say that we are useless. I'm telling you the truth. You spent 850 billion, not 850 million, no. Not 850,000, no. Not 850 naira, no. 850 billion, billion on school feeding program when there are no children in schools to feed. That's what he's talking about. Let's continue. 
Go and ask anybody you know, Sherwood, in your house. How many of the poor people you know in your village got 10 naira from that 850 billion? We don't know. We're hearing about how our oil was sold in China for 2.5 billion dollars. Oil was sold for 2.5 billion dollars. The simple question anybody would ask is, but where is the money? Okay, the money is in the bank accounts in Switzerland, in London, in New York, of and in Dubai, <laughs> of Fulani men and women. They sell the oil and they pocket the money. But they come to fight corruption. And there are 200 million people moping, looking sheepishly, as all this macabre dance of corruption is being played out in front of them. Let's listen. And money shared among members of the government. What you are talking about, uh, those people who now migrated, Okonji Iweala and uh, 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 the man at the African Development Bank, those are products of the PDP's headhunting strategy of finding the best. Who can you talk about in this current government? Nothing. Everybody in this government are competing to outdo each other in terms of corruption. This is what we're saying. A house is not a home if nobody lives inside it. I cannot say President Buhari exists as Nigerian president. I cannot say President Buhari exists as Nigerian president. Exists. He knows. They all know. But they're deceiving themselves. If he's not seen to be acting to actually steer properly the ship of state, that's why the PDP say resign instead of people stealing and balkanizing our commonwealth in your name. Don't just exist there as a referee inside the field and there is no whistle in your hand. That way, it's just a mess in a football team. Please, President Buhari, leave, walk away. And let us take purpose to sort our country well. Yeah, we, 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 we have to. We, we, we have to. Are you listening? <laughs> He's asking Aisha's boyfriend to resign to walk away. They know there's nobody there. Are you telling me that the old dictator, the uh, evil Buhari, will be alive and you ask him to leave office? Is he going to listen to you? Is he going to listen to you? Of course not. But these people are deceiving themselves. They are deceiving themselves and they know it. Everybody is fooling everybody, all of them, and they know it. They know there is nobody inside Asorok. They know it very clearly and very well. They know it. They know there is nobody there. But instead of them to come out and face the reality and say there is nobody in Asorok, what do they do? <laughs> they say, uh, uh, please resign. Please resign. Resign and go to where? Resign to where I ask you. Resign and go to where. Then I will, I will get to 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 uh, uh, Malami later. But I want you to please. Um, uh, there is something else I want you to hear. Very very critical and very very important for you to understand the mess that the people are in. They know the truth. They keep dancing around it. They keep skirting around it. People keep pretending they don't know the truth, but they know it. Instead of them to speak that truth and for that truth to set them free, they keep hiding and talking rubbish every blessed day. What is that rubbish they are talking? It is this very one. They know that Buhari doesn't exist. Is it right Listen. for your party to say that Listen. this government is covering up corruption and ask for the president's resignation? Is that right? Yes. Uh, it's very correct. We had good luck jonathan yes. administration uh -huh. today we have muhammad buhari administration on paper uh borrowing the word of uh mr ba uh, mr uh, the former grass quarter he said what presidency so what we are saying is this particular presidency doesn't seem to exist <laughs> and listen, he doesn't want to say that buhari doesn't exist that presidency doesn't exist listen for guiding the statecraft we cannot see buhari he's missing in action <laughs> that's why you've seen the hush mommy at minister of humanitarian affairs saying that she spent 850 billion nobody can see him all you see him is he's like him um, coronavirus on paper newspaper and tv 
You can never see him as a person. You can never reference him and say, oh, there was a disaster so and so place. The president was there. What does that tell you about the zoo? That some of you call a country. The zoo, Nigeria. What does that tell you about the zoo? That was how they came and they lied to all of you. <laughs> hey, Igbo man, love money. Igbo man want to dominate you. Have you forgotten that as well? This is how they manipulate you. Igbo man love money. Igbo man like stealing. Igbo man this, Igbo man that. Look at Ibrahim uh, uh, Lamode. Ibrahim uh, Madu. Abu Bakar Malami. And all the rest. Tinubu, it is a bullion van. Ganduje. All the rest of them. Are they Igbo people? Did Fulani not convince some of you that listening to me, some of you who are listening to you right now, that Igbo man loves money so much? If he's, uh, if he, if, if you send Igbo man lying down and you jiggle a bit of coins in his ears, if he doesn't wake up, you know he's truly totally dead. A propaganda that they developed, embellished, and planted in your warped minds for years. Today, who is looting the treasury dry? I say, who is looting? Even on national, they did something. Who is looting the treasury dry today? They are looting ourselves, but they don't love money. They have their accounts in Dubai, in Switzerland, in London, everywhere. Their mansions, but they don't love money. Is an evil man struggling and opening a business or a factory that loves money? Do you see the what I call reverse reasoning of a black man? Re always in reverse. Everything we do is in reverse. People struggling, trying to make their lives better. Opening small businesses and taking on people and training them. They love money. Yes. Somebody working hard every blessed day, they go and they open their business. They are working very hard. They love money. But somebody who has no occupation, no handiwork, just goes into Central Bank and collects $2 billion. He doesn't love money. <laughs> <laughs> it's you that is struggling to open your chemist, struggling to open your warehouse, struggling to open your car spare, spare parts shop. You love money. But somebody without, with nothing in life than connection to the caliphate can walk in the central bank and walk away with two billion. And he doesn't love money. Or she doesn't love money. Or as the man called uh, Hush Mommy doesn't love money, yeah? Is a, a hard working, struggling Biafran man or woman that loves money. These are some of the nonsense we have come to correct. And they know it. The same way they lie. Ibo man is dominating. He's going to dominate you. He wants to go into Niger Delta. He wants to take over Niger Delta. And because they know, as well as the British, only an Igbo man can rise up to fight injustice. I'm not trying to put other people down. I'm being honest with you. I'm not trying to put anybody down, but that is a fact. Do you know why? All the independence in the Americas from Haiti, Web Dubois in the USA, were led by Igbo descendants. All of them. Because an Igbo man hates injustice. It, that's a genuine, not all this umoko, uh, all this uh, flavors, all these refraps, selling our land to Fulani. A genuine, pure, clean Igbo man hates injustice. That is why you can never hear that. Ha, have you ever heard that people were attacked in Igbo land before? Without provocation. Let's say the, the Yoruba community or the Hausa community were attacked. We just wake up and attack them. Has it ever happened before? That tells you all you need to know. But those who tell you Igbo man is, uh, is dominant, they are the ones dominating you. They are the ones bringing in Ruga. They are the ones taking over your land forcibly. They are the ones putting their own terrorists into the army to terrorize and to kill you. Yet, your brains are is filled with stones and pebbles you cannot reason properly.